Hey, it's Michael, and this is the Kintsugi Podcast. I'll be back in a minute with today's conversation about resilience. But first, if you're interested in creating a better life, having a better career, please visit kintsugipodcast.com and grab your free workbook on how to have a better life. In it, you'll discover tips and routines so you can find the energy for the things and the people who matter most so you can create a better tomorrow and create the life and career you desire. Hey there, it's Michael. So when my daughters were born, I started journaling, which is something I normally don't do. But at their birth, I was so moved. I wanted to capture every moment of their lives because I believe that life sort of decided in the moments in between our moments. And the deal was they would receive them after they graduated college or university, and they started off into their next chapter of life, their professional career. Well, recently I gave my eldest her journal because she graduated a few months ago back in May. And as I did the editing, all 22 years of it, I waited till the last moment. I knew this day was coming, a little procrastination. I don't think maybe I wanted this day to come, but I knew the day was going to come and it came. Well, I laughed at so many of our funny moments. I did a lot of crying, reflecting on the tough ones. And I was also conflicted when I saw that my values were in conflict with each other, the value of providing for family and the value of being with family. There were many times where I chose work over being at one of her moments. And I really reflected on that. Often when our values are in conflict, that causes some of the most stress that we can manage. Well, when I look back at her journal, the first 22 years of her life, Boy, does it seem like it flew by in a blink of an eye. Now, one of the really cool things about COVID, even though that we're surrounded by loss and pain and suffering, we have paused as a family. Maybe you have as well. But we do have our moments where we feel like everyone's on top of one another. So we have our moments just like any Peloton would have their moment. But it's provided an opportunity to slow down and talk about things like the future as Elle and I did a few days ago, talking about her career, the future, finding a career that she has a lot of passion for, fits her purpose, sort of that dream job type of thing. My advice as a dad, not as a coach, because there's a rule in her house, you can't coach the family, was to live life with awareness because life moves fast and you might miss it if you blink. Well, one of the books I just finished completing was Mary Lara Philpott's collection of essays entitled, I Miss You When You Blink. It was recommended by Powell's Books. Powell's is in Portland, Oregon. By the way, I believe it is Awesome Sauce, best bookstore in the world. My wife is from Oregon, so we like to frequent Powell's versus, say, Jeff Bezos and Amazon. And so we bought a bunch of books, and I went to the recommended reading pile, and they were recommending this book, a collection of essays. And I didn't really do much. I thought the cover was cool. I thought the title was intriguing. So I bought it. But as I got into the book, it didn't take me all but maybe two essays to realize that I did not fit Mary Laura's ideal demographic. She wasn't thinking about me as she was writing her book. She was thinking about other women like her. So I got in touch with my feminine side and I finished the book. And I will give you another, in this Kintsugi podcast, another conversation about resilience, another awesome sauce because her collection of essays was. And her first essay in the book was, again, the title of the book, I Miss You When You Blink. And it was a story of when her six-year-old was waiting for mom. Mom was busy working and her six-year-old was playing. And he wrote down on a scratch pad, he was just doodling, I miss you when you blink. Now, as Mary Lara shares in the essay, it's one of those innocent things kids say, sometimes do, in this case, writes, that captures an adult experience, in this case, identity, and how it can shift in the moments between our moments. 
Yes, we can all have a midlife crisis. That's a big to do. That's a lightning bolt moment. But we make subtle shifts along the way. I'm a big fan of the subtle micro shift. I think that's how we create change that's lasting. Yes, certainly something like my accident was a big lightning bolt, sort of a midlife crisis at 33 that was forced upon me. But the real change I've been able to make, the real resilience that I've been able to demonstrate has come in the moments in between the moments. And I just love that line, I miss you when you blink. It has a little bit of poetic spirit to it. It's beautiful. Now, through my career, before I got into coaching and speaking and writing a few books, I had the privilege to work in healthcare. And I often came in contact with folks who had been diagnosed with a terminal or chronic illness. And when you speak with them, if you've ever had a chance to speak with someone who has sort of dealing with that same fate, suffered that same fate, maybe a friend, or maybe you too work in healthcare, you know how incredible their strength is in that moment. There's a clarity in how they see themselves and how they see life. They question without any pause. They're previously unquestionable. They have certainly stopped chasing happiness. And they focus on fewer things that matter, but those things that do, man, they matter so much. They live with awareness. And today, with so much pain and suffering and loss that we have, I think this is an opportunity to see life and ourselves more clearly. This is a moment to get through this moment and become more resilient. When we get back up, we shift just ever so slightly with more wisdom so we can head in a different direction with more clarity. It's one of those moments between our moments that shape our lives. But like life, it can fly by in a blink of an eye. But here's the thing I see out there as I talk to others, and this is really in the United States, but I think it's globally, is that instead of grabbing a pause, breathe, and reflect moment, as I would say, what's happening today is that we seem to be spinning even faster on our hamster wheels. I think we're missing the opportunity to better understand life as we stand so close to death. Because sometimes the only way to appreciate light is to stand in the darkness. Sometimes the only way to appreciate life is to stand close to death. And right now, we are standing close to pain, suffering, and loss. There's death of life, but also there's loss of so many other things that we once appreciated about life. And I know not everyone is ready to do inner development work, inner work, as they say. You may not be there too if you're listening to this right now, because many of us are still in the trauma and we can't have post-traumatic growth if we're still in the trauma. And when we think about the grief cycle, So many of us haven't reached acceptance yet, that acceptance phase and how we deal with grief. Until we get there, it's hard to have the growth. But there will be a moment when you start to think, you might blink, you may not, and you start to have one of those conversations with yourself, the ones that we don't like to talk about at work, but we have them all the time with ourselves. And you may worry if you have what it takes to reach for better instead of trying to revert back to normal, because that's comfort, the normal part. It'll be one of those moments between your moments. And when it happens, I do encourage you not to blink, but rather see all that you've been, all that you are today, and who you will be tomorrow. See that whole collection. Live life with that awareness clearly see you. Because when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And you are more resilient than this moment. We all are. But we can only get through this moment in the way that we want to, to reach for better, instead of going back and reaching for normal, that comfort zone, if you will, if we live life with awareness. So I want to thank you for listening, as I always do. Hopefully you can leave a review or subscribe or share with a member of your Peloton. We have another day by the time you're listening to this before our breakaway from burnout 
conversation on August 27th at 5 p.m. Eastern. I hope you'll join. I'll put the link to save your spot in the show notes. And if you have a question about this conversation about resilience or really anything else under the sun, anything about life or career, you can visit kintsugipodcast.com and leave your question there. And while you're there, you can check out a -a one-of-a-kind life and leadership development program called The Pace Line. I built it for all the corporate warriors out there looking to do more with their lives, looking to reach for better, not to go back to normal. So I hope you'll check it out. And maybe you want to become a member and we can be on this journey together, this journey to live life with awareness, to celebrate how imperfectly perfect we are, and to celebrate all of our scars, wrinkles, and blemishes because they tell this beautiful story that we have lived life. We have, yes, fallen down, but we have gotten up with more wisdom and we're making such an important impact that can create a better tomorrow. And that's what it's all about. So until next week, be healthy. Remember to pause, breathe, and reflect. And of course, I have to say this, have fun storming the castle. We'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.